Today's stuff we're going to be learning is Baba Kama Daf Chet. Um, today's stuff is sponsored by ha- Rab- Rabbi Chaim Heron and Terry Kravosh, and loving memory of Sergeant Elisheva Rose Lubin, Rose Elisheva Bar Chaim David and Nechama Rachel, great niece of their friends, Eddie and Minda Snitkoff, who was murdered on Monday morning, November 6th, in Jerusalem. May her short life and radiant and exuberant spirit be a memory and a source of strength to all those who loved her. Today's stuff is sponsored by Yael Tzin, to the Refuah Shlema of Oz Yeshua Ben Talia Bat Zion, and all those injured and for a safe return of all the hostages. Okay, we're going to get started. We have a bit of a long and complicated daf, so I will warn you. Um, we're going to get into a lot of nechasim meshuabadim. If you remember, that means lean property. Okay, we're going to get there soon. Um, what we're starting with is this question that Rabbi Rav Shmuel Bar Abba asked Rabbi Abba. I recommend also use the, the study guide. I'll actually use it some of today. I'll share screen, so if you're watching, you can you, you can follow along. Shmuel Bar Abba asked this question of Rabbi Abba, and he said. When we talk about ED, the best of the land, do we mean the best, according to Rabbi Akiva, who said the best of the land of the person who caused damage? Is that the best of their land, no matter how good their land is, even if it's super good, better than the rest of the world, they still have to pay with the best? Or does it just mean best compared to the rest of the world? And we already discussed the different conceptual framework there. I'm not going to go into that right now. So Rabbi Abba answered by saying, of course, it's the best of the damage, the one who damaged, of course, it's the best of his land. And it doesn't matter whether it's it's superb and way above normal because it says metaf sadehu, and that seems pretty clear. Well, comes Roshmo Bar Abba, who asks the question and throws a question back at him from a bright A today. Elo L-E-D, we're now going to have a whole list, and it's pretty straightforward in this case. What happens if the person has only ED land or only Zebrui land? Okay, the basic premise of this again is if you're someone who got damaged, you get to collect from the best land. If you're someone who loan money and they owe you money, then you're going to collect from the average. And if you're a woman trying to get a chip of money, you're going to get from the worst. Do you remember why this is? This is because we want to make sure that people, that men are willing to marry women and we want to tell them, don't worry. Yes, you have to commit to her all this money, but she's only going to take it from the lower quality land. So now they say in this bright time, L-E-D, what if the person only had a deed, the best land? Kulam govim and Of course, they're all going to only collect from that. You can't say, oh, sorry, I don't have poor land, so you can't collect your money. Of course, you can collect your money from the best land. Benonit, kulam govim benonit. If everything was average, so everybody gets from the average, meaning even if you are you have damaged, you you were damaged by the person and you're supposed to get the best, well, they don't have the best, you're going to get benonit. Ziburi, kulam govim ziburi, right? If it's the worst, everyone will get the worst. What if he had all three? Well, then obviously. The damaged people get edit. The Balchov, the creditor, gets Benoni. That's the basic law. Now we start to get into more complicated ones. What if you have best and average? So obviously, again, the damaged will get edit. The Balchov, So the one of money and the Ktuba of a woman will get the Benoni. Okay? Because he doesn't have Ziburi. Benoni Ziburi. Okay, this is the case that's going to eventually be the one that we're going to raise a difficulty with, but we'll get to that soon. If you have average quality land and poor quality land, so the Nizakin will obviously get from the Benoni. What about the Balchov? Well, he'll also get from Benoni, which seems pretty logical, because Balchov and creditors are supposed to get Benoni, and you have Benoni, so great. And Ketubah Shab Ziburi. And since you have Ziburi land, so the Ketuba will be from the Ziburi. If you have only the best land and the worst land, okay, we're giving all the possible permutations. Nizakin get the ed. Now here you get something we didn't get before, which is a balchov. He doesn't get to go up a level; he goes down a level. Okay, you don't get to collect more than what you're deserving of. You go down if we don't have your type. So the balchov and the ketubani shah will get zibulit. But now we're going back to this line. Katani miat mitzia. In the middle case, they said that what. It wasn't really the middle case, okay? They just mean it wasn't the last case, okay? And now I'm pulling it up on the, to share screen so you can follow here. It says, Benonit v'zibulit, nizakinu v'acho b'benonit, uktubat isha v'zibulit. It was the second to last line, okay? So, if you have benonit and zibulit, if you got damaged or you were a creditor, you're going to get from the benonit. Now, and the ketubat isha, obviously, you're going to get the zibulit. Now, they say the following. Rav Shmuel Bar Abba says to Rabbi Abba, who answered, it obviously goes based on the Mazik's property. Well, if the Mazik has Benonit and Ziburit, and that's all the Mazik has, and it's all relative to what he owns, then his Benonit theoretically is Edit, is his best land, because it's all relative. So what does it mean relative? It means your be- your average land, if it's average to the rest of the world, but it's your best land, then we should call it Edit. Okay? In other words, we're gonna, you can't take it only in one way and say, if you have superb land, we're going to call it Edit. 
But if you have Benoni land and that's the best that you have, we're going to call it Benoni. No, your Benoni becomes Edid, and that's why I crossed them out here. Your Benoni is like Edid, and your Ziburit is like Benoni. So the case of Benoni with Ziburit should really be like Edid Benoni, which means your best land, right, which is the Benoni, your average land, actually should only go to the, the damaged person. And your Zibari land, which now becomes, because relatively speaking, it's your Benoni land, it's your average land, should go to the Baal Chovet. That's not what the Brita says. So let's read that inside. His Benoni becomes Idit. So Zibari and Baal Chovet should go down and drop down and collect from the Zibari, which now is considered Benoni. So that's the big problem here. To which they answer, Oh, you just didn't understand the case. Yes, we said it's a case where you had only Benoni and Zibari, but actually when you took out the loan, when the person took out the loan, they had Edit, Benoni, and Zibari. They had all three types. And that means, now what, when does your land get lean to the loan? At the moment you take out the loan. So if I took out a loan, okay, or maybe we'll, we'll use this example and we'll keep going with these names. Ruth takes out a loan, okay? Ruth takes a loan and her loan is, she has all three properties at the time, Edi, Beno, Need, and Zibri. And then a few months later, the loan comes up. In between the time that she's supposed to pay back the loan, she sells her Edi property. She sells her best property. So right now, she has only Beno, Need, and Zibri. However, her Beno, Need, maybe now is considered Edi, but it doesn't matter. Because the moment it, the loan happened, the loan was already what we call the Shuabad. Okay? This Beno, Need land was already leaned to this loan, this middle land. So even though now, it might be edit. It doesn't matter if she took out a loan today. Then her loan wouldn't be wouldn't be lean to the her her best her average land we call it, which is really now her best land wouldn't be lean to that to the loan. But because at the time of the loan she had edit and, and then later sold it, and that's why she's only left with these two. That's why the balchov gets from the bain. Okay, that's the basic claim. The chayna also said He explained this case of the bright in the same way we just did. Now the Gemara wants to do a hachinami mistaber, which means we're going to further prove that this must have been the case. And the way they're going to do it, you can see from this next chart, is they're going to bring a contradiction between our brayta, the one we just said, and a different brayta, where the law is the opposite. Instead of getting the Baal Chov for Beno need in this case, the Baal Chov is going to get from the Zibari. And they're going to say, how else to resolve the contradiction? But by saying, one is where there was Edith, she had Edith in the beginning, and one was where she didn't have Edith in the beginning. And that's going to be their answer, which is then going to further prove what we just said, that really Bishalohim Shami, and this just doesn't create a problem because even though the Benonit should be Edid, it doesn't matter in this case because there was Edid to begin with. And when the and the Benonit is your best land at the time of the loan, then that's going to become Edid and the Balchov is only going to get from the Ziburit. And that's going to be the first resolution to the contradiction that's going to basically support what Rabbi Abba said in the first place. Again, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Abba asked Rabbi Abba, is it relative to the Mazi or is it relative to the world? And he said it's relative to the Mazi, to which they brought this question from the Brighton, and then they resolved it by saying it wasn't this case where there was only Benoni and Zibarit. It was a case where there was Edith also, Benoni and Zibarit, just the Edith is no longer here. That's why I made an X through it because he sold the Edith. Okay, but at the time of the loan, there were three properties. So now we're going to do that and we're going to basically take this contradiction, resolve it in that way, and, and say perfect. The problem is going to be, though, they're going to bring three other resolutions to this contradiction which are not going to be able to then prove Bishalohim Shami, okay? And then that's where we're going to go after that. But right now we want to prove it from this contradiction in the, between the two bright tones. And then, like I said, we're going to have three other resolutions to the contradiction, which are either going to have nothing to do with this or actually going to prove the opposite or maybe be inconclusive. Okay, we'll see. So, Midekatani Achrite. Well, it says in a different bright tone, So again, very simply, it's the exact same case in the Brighton that we had. You have two types of property, Benoni, average, and poor land. And instead of saying in our Brighton that the Baal Chov gets from the average, here it says the Baal Chov gets from the Zibari, to which they say, Kashi Hadadi. These two sources contradict each other. And therefore, they assume that Allah Shmamina must be the Brighton. We're talking about different situations. Kan Shai Talui Didu Mechara, Kan Shalohai Talui Didu Mechara. Right? The first case, he had Edith land originally and sold it. But since at the time of the loan, he had the Edith, the loan was lean to, it was already that land was lean to the, the loan. In which case, later, when they come to collect them, there's only Benoni, there's no more Edith. It doesn't matter because he can collect from the Benoni because it was already lean to this loan. 
Whereas the second option, the second case where it says he gets from the Zebra, read Shalai tell the Wedid Umachara. The, the person who took the loan, Ruth, Ruth never had the loan. And therefore, she never had ED. And therefore, her Benoni was ED. And which was the one that was leaned to the loan then? The Zebari, which became Benoni. Because it's all relative. And then that proves our point, Rabbi Abba's point, that it's all relative to the person whose property it is. All relative. Not compared to the rest of the world. Compared to the rest of the world, the Benoni is Benoni, the Zebari is Zebari, and then we would always collect from the Benoni. Okay, but, Ibai Ema, second option. And here you can see from the chart, that according to this option, we're actually going to come to the opposite conclusion. If we resolve the contradiction in this way that we're going to, the conclusion in terms of is Bishalo or Bishalo Lama is going to be the reverse. It's going to be, oh, it's obvious we compare this to the rest of the world. So now, Okay, so now we're going to assume, basically to reject the first resolution. It's really a case where there was just been and Zibari, they never had ED property. Now, how do you resolve them? If they never had other property, then theoretically, if you're going to say it's all based on um, the person themselves, well, then you should collect from the Benoni. And if it's all from the rest of the, I'm sorry, you should collect from the Zibari. If it's all from the rest of the world, then you should collect from the Benoni. So how are they going to resolve this? For Lokasha, ha de shabia Benoni shelo ki alma, ve kan de lo shabia Benoni shelo ki alma. They're going to say each bright is referring to a different situation. One is the Benoni that belonged to this person was equal to the Edith of the rest of the world. And the second case, and that's the first case, because if you're Benoni, right? So now it's not relative. Now we're going to say the Benoni is like Edith, not because it's your best, but because your average land was equal to the Edith of the rest of the world. Now, I'm sorry, I said that wrong. The bri- that's the second bright my mistake. Let's go back. I'm sorry I said that wrong. In the first case, when you actually collect from the Benoni, and that was the whole problem, doesn't your ED become ben- doesn't your Benoni become ED and your Zebra become Benoni? No. In the first case, it's not relative to your property, and therefore your Benoni doesn't become ED. And actually, your Benoni wasn't equal to the best of the rest of the world, meaning, very simply, your Benoni was Benoni by the world standards, and your Zebra was Zebra according to your world standards. And that's why the Balchov collects from the Benoni, because it was Benoni by all standards, okay? By, by the world standards. And that's what's important. And then again, we're going to come to the conclusion according to this explanation. Again, these are all possible resolutions of the contradiction. We don't know how to resolve the contradiction. These are just all different possibilities, which then prove that you can't use this contradiction and the resolution to the contradiction to prove your point about the Shalom, because you can prove the exact opposite. The second right, which says you only get from the Zibarit, is because in this case, your Benoni was Shavya Ki'idi Chokola Olam. Your Benoni is actually equal in value to the rest of the world, the best of the rest of the world. And your Zibarit was like Benoni. And that's why, if we're going to go by the rest of the world, that's why the Baal Chog, the creditor, is going to be able to collect from your Zibarit and not your Benoni, because your Benoni is actually not Benoni. It's actually, it's actually top quality land. Now, what's the problem? The problem with this is, if your Benoni is indeed of the rest of the world, then why do we call it, if you have two pieces of land, one is Benoni, one is Zibri, and your Benoni is like the Edith of the world, and your Zibri is like the Benoni, then why do they call it Benoni and Zibri? Why don't they call it Edith and Benoni, right? It doesn't make any sense. So some of the commentaries explain that what happened here is you actually have three pieces of land. You have Edith, right? For you, they're relatively Edith, Zibri, uh, Benoni, and Zibri. But your Benoni is like Edith of the world, which means your Edith is way higher. It's like we talked about yesterday. It's superb. It's way higher. Now, what did we learn? If you have, if you're going to say that it goes by the world, then you don't have to pay that land. And that's why they just didn't even relate to that in the Brighta. They were relating to a case where you had land that could be collected that was in the range of Zibari to ED. It happens you didn't have anything that was Zibari. You only had, right, average quality land and high quality land. And then you had super high quality land. Since you had super high quality land, for you, that was Edith. Your great land, which is really from the world's perspective, is Edith, but compared to your land, it's actually Benoni. And your Zibari, which is actually average land compared to your other two plots, is called Zibari. And that's why we said Benoni and Zibari. So in the second Braita, you're going to have to say there was a third piece of land, otherwise it doesn't make sense. Because if you only had two, and your Benoni, and we call them Benoni and Zibari, and your Benoni and Zibari are 
actually Edit and, and Benoni compared to the rest of the world, and we should have just called it Edit and Benoni. So you'd have to say that there was he had superb land, and that's what we were talking about here. Okay, that's a little bit complicated, but the main point here, again, is if you pull up the chart, you will see that in this interpretation, this means it all goes by the rest of the world, okay? It has nothing to do with what your value, your land is, is valued um, compared to yourself, okay? So if your Benoni is actually Benoni by regular standards, then they'll collect from Benoni. But if your Benoni is ED, then the creditor is only going to be able to collect from your Zebrae land because your Zebrae land is basically considered Benoni. Okay, so now we have two ways to resolve the contradiction. One proves that it goes relative to you, and the other one says it goes relative to the world. Third explanation. Your Benoni is really actually average. And then the question is, no, you only had two though. So if you only have Benoni and Zibri and your Benoni is average, well, if you compare it to the rest of the world, so it's Benoni, which means you're going to get Benoni, right? You're, the creditor is going to be able to take your Benoni land. But if we say it's relative to yourself, then your Benoni becomes your best quality and your Zibri becomes your average quality. And then the Bachov is only going to be able to collect from the bad quality land that you have because your bad quality is considered average by standards of the world. So now they're going to say the following. Mar Savao, so the Hacha Baha Klivi. The Machloket is this. And now we're going to say the Machloket is exactly the question that Rosh Hashanah is asking. Mar Savar Bishalohem Shami. The one who says we're going to compare it relative to yourself is going to say that the Zibri becomes Benoni. So here, that's why I X out the Zibri. The Zibri is now the new Benoni because for you, it's Benoni. So that's why the second writer says you're going to collect from Zibri because they say it's all relative to yourself. And Mar Saval, the first sprite that says, B'shel olam hem shami. It's all relative to the world. So your Benoni might be your best land, but it's actually average land for everybody else. And therefore, those first sprite and the second sprite to forget, the first two options say they agree. They were just talking about different situations. Here they're saying, we're talking about the exact same situation. It's just a machloket, what you hold in this area. So now I just want to review that according to all three interpretations, the resolution to this contradiction has something to do with this machloket of b'shelo or b'shel olam. It's just a matter of, does it prove b'shelo? Does it prove b'shel olam? Or do these two brides don't have the exact same machloket that we're having between Rosh Hashanah Abba and Rabbi Abba? Again, it wasn't necessarily machloket. It was just Rabbi Shmuel Abba asked the question. Rabbi Abba answered, and then Rosh Shmuel said, but that doesn't make sense compared to the source. So we started questioning. The fourth interpretation is going to have absolutely nothing to do with the b'shelo or b'shel olam. The, first, the fourth resolution is something entirely different. Ravina Amar B'de Ula Plivi. The, the, here, there's really a machloka between about what Ula said. Now, this is something we mentioned yesterday, but now we're going to see it more inside. Dvar Torah Baal Chob Really, a Baal Chob is only supposed to collect Zibuli. Now, Shinema, Bachutz Ta'amod, Va'isha Terashan, Asher Tanoshebo, Yotzi Alecha Eta Avot Achutza. Now, the way this works is, Torah says, if you take a loan, you're supposed the the lender is supposed to wait outside the house, and when the the person who borrows the money, the borrower is supposed to bring you a collateral. Let them choose what collateral they're going to give you. In other words, don't go into the person's house and say, "Hey, I'm taking your fancy watch," and that's going to be collateral for the loan. But no, you actually have to wait outside, and they'll bring it to you. Now, the theory goes like this: Ula says, "Matar kosha ladam lehutzi lechutz." Now, what do you think he's going to bring out? If you go in, you're going to take his fanciest watch. If he gives something to you, he's going to give you his cheapest watch, right? Obviously, it's going to have to be something of value, but he's going to give you something he doesn't care so much about. Pachot kelim, the lowest of the kelim, which is like the ziburit, right? So that means from here, now this assumes, it's a big machloket about how, to, how you assume what a collateral is. Is a collateral just an insurance policy? Or is a collateral meant that if you don't pay back the loan, they're just going to keep it? So according to this, it sounds like a collateral is meant as, as a payback of the loan, like almost like you're paying it back immediately, even though you're not. But this is there to insure, but, but more than insure. It's really that we can take this as, as payment. So if this can be taken as payment, and this is Zibarit, because they can take out to you the worst that they want, it sounds like really by Torah law, it's only Zibarit. And then, So why do they say Benonit? But then, no one would ever want to lend money if they're going to get paid by the worst of the land, and then we won't have people lending money. So that's why they upped it to Benoni. So now, the one who says the Baal Chob Benoni holds like Ula. And Mar eat le takanta de Ula. Mar le le takanta de Ula. And the second one says, no, we don't have this takana of Ula. Okay, now, 
There's a big debate about how to understand this. Does he mean we don't hold this at all? And the Balchov only gets Zibari, then that's the Tanit opinion. It's possible. Or maybe he means in a bit more of a unique situation, like we were discussing, but I'm not going to, you know, where, where it's valued differently, but I'm not going to get into that right now because we have a lot of complicated stuff coming up right now. So I'll just put it out there as a question. Okay. Tanu Lebanon. So again, there were, to review, there were four resolutions to this contradiction. Okay. But the point of the resolutions was to say that you can't prove from here what Rabbi Abba said that Misha Okay, that it all was relative to him, because even though that was one way to resolve the contradiction, there were three alternative ways to resolve it, some which actually led to the opposite conclusion, or led to the fact that there's machloket, or had absolutely nothing to do with this machloket at all. Okay, Tanu Rabbanan. Now we get to a Tosefta. There's two basic, the Tosefta is going to split into two. We have machar le'echad or l'shlosha adam. You sold to one person, or to three people. Ke'echad, meaning all in one day. So you had three different properties, Idi, Beno, Niv, and Zibri. And you sold them all on the same day, either to one person or to three people. Now, it's actually confusing. And this is going to be the question. It says, Machar Echad, stop. Then it says, or to three people on one day. That's what it means, Ke'echad. Now, the question is going to be, when it says, when you sold to one person, is it all on the same day? Or could it even be on subsequent days? We'll get to that. So I... I I want to be clear about how I'm reading this because I kind of read it the other way and I want to make sure, no. Machal Echad is one case and then or three people all on the same day. We don't know about the Echad. Is it all on the same day or is it on different days? We'll see that soon. Because the second part is going to be if you sold to three people, one after the other. So the question is, is the date of one person on one day or one person on every day, on subsequent days, which is it more similar to? Anyway, let's just go with, you sell to one person, we don't know yet how, you know, you sold them all three on one day or subsequent days or you sold to three people all on one day. The one who bought the zibari, okay, let's go with the three people. The one who bought the zibari is the one who you're going to collect your ketuba from. The one who bought the best, you're going to, the damaged person is going to collect from. The one who bought, right? So this is, again, let's talk about characters. We have Ruth. Ruth sells to Nomi her land. Three plots of land, or she sells to Nomi, Yael, and Tamar, one after the other, all on the same day, three plots of land. Okay, she has an edid and they don't need a Whatever, now, when Ruth had all these lands on her property, if, you know, a Nizak would have come, he would have collected from the best. If the, the Tubadi shot, a woman collecting her Tubadi, she would have collected from the worst, etc. So now that she sold these all on the same day, we basically, it's like she transferred all those, all those liens to, so, the one who she damaged is going to collect it from the one who got the, the best land. The one who, okay, it, it's just going to go exactly as it was before. If she sold them all to Nomi, then again, when you go to collect, you're going to collect the best from the, you know, the damages from the best, the tuber from the worst, the creditor from the middle. Okay. And likewise, if you sold to three different people on the same day, it's just going to go like that. That's a simple law. Okay. So everything goes with the lien that was connected to it. But if on Sunday she sold to Naomi, on Monday she sold to Yael, and on Tuesday she sold to Tamar, it doesn't matter what Tamar ended up with. She's the last one. She's the first one they're going to collect from. Why? Because basically, when they, when, when, if you go to Naomi and say, hey, give me whatever it is, okay? Naomi will say, hey, you can't collect from me. Let's say she sold Naomi the best. And then they, and she, that was the first collection. Now you have to remember the way this works. Ruth owes money. Let's say she damaged someone. She owes money. Theoretically, they should get from the ED the best, but she sold it to Naomi. At the time, she still had two plots of land. She had a, a, an average and a zibri. Now, at the moment that, let's assume Leah is the one who got damaged, Leah goes to collect from Ruth. Ruth says to, uh, to collect from Naomi, I want that best land that you bought from Ruth. Well, Naomi can say, what are you talking about? Ruth has land still. You can't collect from me unless Ruth has no more land. That's the rule. You can't collect, we'll see it later in the Gemara, from the Chassim Shu'abadim, from lean property, if there's B'nai Chorin, if there's free, free property. So Ruth, if you're talking about day one on Sunday, she sold to Naomi and comes Leah to collect, there's still land in Ruth's, in Ruth's house. Now, come, if she comes on Monday, so still there's one plot left with Ruth. So both Ruth and, uh, both Naomi and Yael can say, hey, you know, go to, go to Ruth. So when she sells on day three, the last property to Tamar, and then on day four, Leah comes and goes to Naomi, who bought the best land, and says, hey, listen, give me the best land. I'm in Isaac. She says, what are you talking about? When I bought this, you would still have land to pay you back. So you got to go to the last person who bought from her. 
The last free property that was in Ruth's hands, that's where you get from. And regardless of whether it's Ziburid or Benonid or whatever it is, you're going to get from the last person. Ainlo, what if the, the property that's in Tamar's possession is not enough to cover the, the amount? So go So you go to the one before her, to Yael. And lo, only if that's not enough, go Then you're going to go to Naomi. But basically, if the, cover, if the amount of the, of the loan or whatever it was could be covered by person number three you bought or person number three plus person number two, then person number one is off the hook. Because her claim is, at the time I bought it, right, you still, you could have paid, Ruth could have paid it back from other properties. So right, like I went out because I bought first, uh, Naomi says. Okay, that's the basic idea. So now comes the big question. What's the case of selling it to one person? What's the case? Is it that you sold them to all in, one, all in the same day? Just like the three people that were sold to all in the same day, right? All in the same day, we say that whole second claim doesn't work. Because once it's on the same day, there is, we don't, we, we're, it's irregardless of the order. Even though in one day, the order is different. But in the end, we don't usually put an hour on the star. It's all like it was sold at once. So, now, even though with three, theoretically, you could have said, still, Naomi bought first on that day, Yael bought second, Tamar bought third, and theoretically, you could have said there was an order, and that would be relevant. Naomi could say, no, take it from the last person. And yet, and yet we don't say that. So, all the more so, it would be obvious. If you sold it to one person, of course, he can't claim, well, I bought this one first, I bought that one second, I bought that one third, all in the same day. So therefore, so they would not even need to tell us that case. So therefore, the fact that they mentioned Mecharah Ma'echad must be the through selling to three people was one after the other. Okay? So, I'm sorry, selling to one person was that you sold. Okay, so now we're going to just have Ruth and Naomi. Ruth sells to Naomi three plots, one on Sunday, one on Monday, one on Tuesday. And then we're going to say, in that case, since we don't care that it was a different order, okay, that, that I'm sorry, they happened on different days. Basically, whoever is deserving of the best is going to get the best, right? If Leah is deserving of the best land, she's going to take the best land from her. If she's deserving of the middle, she's going to take the middle. Now, this is going to be something that's going to be very complicated to figure out. So, the is going to say, I don't get it though. Just like Naomi can come in the case with the three people that bought on separate days and say, hey, when I bought this, I left you with other property. So theoretically, if Naomi first bought the Edid, and then the next day, this is the Benoni, and the next day, the Ziburid, when they come to collect the Edid, she could say, what are you talking about? When I bought that on Sunday, I left Ruth with other land. And really, you only get the last land that Ruth had, which was the Zebra And therefore, you can't collect from me the, 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 the best of my land. Take the worst. Okay? Now, to which they say, So how can we possibly explain this case? It must be that the Edi was the last one sold. And that's why they can claim the Edi land. Okay? Because it was the last one bought. And we're going to have to explain this later, but we'll stick with it right now. Well, like we understand it basically right now. In other words, it would only be in a case if the ED was last, then the Nizakin can claim from the ED. Okay, because again, if that was the one you left, then that's the one that has first dibs to collect from. But the Gemara says, and that doesn't make any sense, because what was the law in the first case? Let's just look again at the Tosefta. The Tosefta said, this is a very complicated study. I'm just warning you, okay, if you haven't figured that out. So in the case of Machar Echad. What did we say? Kulam nechnesu tachad abanim. So if you come to get a ketubah, it'll be a zibarit. If you come to Rabal Chov, you'll get the benarit. Nizak and you'll get the idit. If we say that Naomi bought on Sunday the zibarit, on Monday the, the benarit, and on Tuesday the idit, which is what the Gemara just said, then theoretically, when someone goes to get a ketubah isha, they should be able to collect it from the best. Because what was our whole theory? Whatever was left last is the one you can collect from. Right? So... Therefore, it doesn't make any sense. So they say, if you're going to say that's the case, well, then we have a problem. They should all be collected from the Edith. And that's not what the Tos have to say. The Tos have to say, everyone gets the land that fits their, their thing. So they answer the following. And this answer we're going to suggest and then reject it. Naomi can say to them the following. She has like a smart argument to give back to Leah. When Leah comes and wants to collect them all from the Edith, what can she say? Let's say they're going for the Ketubah Isha, uh, for the Baal Chov, let's say. Uh, no, let's go with the Ketubah Isha. 
and they want to take from the ED. She's, no, 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 sorry. Balchov is the better example. There's a creditor. Leah is owed money by Ruth for a loan, and she goes to collect the money from Naomi. And she says, oh, the last plot you bought on Tuesday was the ED. Great, I get the ED, because that was the last thing you left in Ruth, and therefore you're coming in place of Ruth. You know, I get that. Well, Naomi could say the following. You want to get the best land instead of the Benoni land? If you're going to just be, you know, shut your mouth and take from the best, great. But if you're going to make an issue, I'm sorry, take from the average. But if you're going to make an issue and try to take from the best, I have a better solution. What will I do to, to mess you up? I'll just return a Ziburit land, the Ziburit land I bought to Ruth. And if I return it to her, you'll only be able to collect from the Ziburit because at that point, Ruth will have land. Once Ruth has land, you can't come to me. So I'll just return her that land, and then you'll take it for the zebra and then you'll get messed up. So, therefore, don't start bothering me about trying to collect your 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 loan from the best land, because I'll just mess you up, and you'll have to get it from the zebra To which the Gemara says that still doesn't really work with Bright, and why not? Ihachi, turning out on a bit. nami ne'mahachi. In terms of damaged people, you could also say the same, because what happens? Do you remember what we learned at the beginning of the daf? If, if Ruth only has Zibari, then Leah can only collect damages from Zibari because that's all she has. Now, what was the halach in our brayta? If you sell to one person, even day after day, what will happen? You'll be able to collect Nizakin from the best. But if Naomi has this solution, she can use the solution even for the ED, for the for a damage. If Ruth was damaged by, if uh, Leah was damaged by Ruth, she can say the exact same thing. She can say, listen, I'm giving you only Zibri because anyway, I can give you Zibri, and I can mess you up. I can just return the Zibri land to Ruth and then you can't collect from me at all. You're going to get the Zibri from Ruth. So therefore, theoretically, she should only have to pay everything from the Zibri because she can always just return the land to Ruth. So that's not the law in the Tosefta. So therefore, this doesn't make much sense. And the it must be a case. And here they're going to try to say, this is why... You can't, this, we're going to come up with a case where that solution is not an option for Naomi to return the land to Ruth, because even if she did, it wouldn't be relevant. And we're going to see why in a minute. We must be talking about orphans. Now, orphans, there's a unique law about orphans. The way it works is if, if Ruth was an orphan and when her father died, he left this property to Ruth and also left the loan. So the three properties were hers. And he had a loan out. So the person who borrowed, like Leah, who had this loan out, right? Uh, he had, Leah was owed money. She was a creditor. She loaned money to Ruth's father. She could collect it from all those properties. She sells it to Naomi. Again, Leah can still collect from Naomi. But if Naomi says, I'm going to return the plot to Ruth, when Naomi returns the plot, actually, the orphans don't have to pay from that. It's not lean to the loan. Because the way it works is, an orphan, if an orphan, let's say, didn't get any land from the father, then, there's, then their creditors don't get paid back. Only land is leaned from a father's loan to the orphans. And only land once that they sell. But if they buy it, so if, if Naomi returns the property, she's really selling it back to Ruth. And if Ruth is an orphan who buys property after the father's dead, that is not leaned to the loan. So even though this property was leaned in the beginning, when they would get it back in this solution that Naomi has come up with in a very smart manner, well, it's not going to work because it actually is no longer lean to the loan. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't help Naomi that claim in a case of orphans. So now, where are we? Again, let's just review. We tried to say, what is Mecharan Lachir? We suggested it was Bezah Harzeh. It was one person, three subsequent days. Still, everyone's going to get from whatever land they normally would have gotten from originally, to which we said it doesn't make any sense. So they then said, well, it must be the ED was the last one. And then they said, well, the ED being the last one, they could all collect from the ED, to which they said, no, because it's this case where Naomi has a good out. But then they said, no, that doesn't work. That answer, because we're going to explain a case where it's not going to work, like by orphans. So that knocks out that answer. So now we're going to go back to a different answer to the question of why can't they all collect from the best of the land? So now, in other words, theoretically, if it was orphans, they really could all collect from the best land and say, listen, Naomi, you bought from Ruth. The last thing you bought from Ruth was the ED. We get the ED, and she can't say, I'll just return the, the Zibarit because it won't help them because that Zibarit will not be lean to the the loan. Okay, now, Ella, they say the following. 
Okay, so let's just read about the atonement. I don't, I don't think I read this whole thing. So you can't collect from land that the orphans purchase later. And this returning land of Naomi would be basically repurchased land. So now the Shibuda wouldn't be on that anymore. And therefore you can't say that. So now I know this has been very complicated. This is actually be very straightforward. The the concept of okay, which means what's the concept that you can't collect from Naomi if Ruth still has land, right? If if she sells Naomi one plot, whatever Ruth is left, it doesn't matter what quality. Anyone who Leah, who's owed money, right, who's owed money from Ruth, is going to only be able to collect from Ruth, and then likewise, right, in that order. If she first sells to Naomi, and then she sells to Yael, and then she sells to Tamar, right? Naomi could say, well, you still had land, so don't collect from me. And Yael could say, well, when I bought it, you, Ruth still had land, so don't collect from me. And only Tamar is left. She's the one who stuck because she bought last. Well, that's all Mishum Takanta Didi. That's all to protect the buyer. It's to protect the first buyer, right? Naomi bought, and we want to protect her. Ruth still had land, so great. We're protecting Naomi from that. Ella. But, but here, Ana Baha Takanta Lo Michale. If Naomi bought all three plots, now we go back to the fact that we're saying the case is where she bought Edith at the end. We want to understand why in a case where one person bought three plots one day after the other, we're not going to collect from the last one. Usually you collect from the last one to protect the buyer. Well, if Naomi bought the Edith last, it's not in her best interest to have you collect from the last property first, right? Because then you'll collect from the Edith for a tuba of a woman, which for sure you shouldn't be doing. So, she's going to say, Naomi's going to say, listen, the whole purpose, again, Naomi's very smart in this whole thing, of, of what they're putting in her mouth anyway. The whole purpose of taking from the last one was to protect a buyer, right? To protect the first buyer, to protect the second buyer. But in this case, I'm the only buyer. And it's actually worse for me. If I bought the ED last, I'm going to be messed up. So I don't really want this Takana. This Takana doesn't work for me and I don't want it. And you can do this. How do we know this? Kedah Rava, as Rava said. Rabbi said, anyone who says, it's very nice the rabbis did this to protect me, but this doesn't protect me, so I'm not interested in this takana. So they can do that. So therefore, if it's three people, obviously, Ruth wa- uh, Naomi wanted the protection that, you know, go get it from Yael, and Yael wanted the protection, go get it from Tamar. But in the case where it's three, one person who bought three plots of land one day after the other, and they happen to have bought the Edith last, it's way worse for them if you say collect from the last. And therefore, they say thanks, but no thanks. Now, what Rabbi said was, anyone who says, I don't want a takana of the rabbis like this. Now, what's like this? The Gemara wants to know. Micah Gonzo, Kedir Rav Huna, and this is something we learned in, in Seder Nashim, Da'ama Rav Huna, Yecholai Isha Shetomar Lebala, Eini Nizona Ve'eini Osa. If you remember, the, right, we saw this in Ketubot and some other places as well. The deal between a husband and wife is, the husband, part of the Ketubah of commitment is, all her proceeds go to the husband, and in exchange, the husband gives her food. If she says, listen, I don't want your food. I'm happy to work for myself and keep my own salary. She's allowed to do that. So that's a case where the Chachamim instituted this to help the woman. But if the woman doesn't want it, she's allowed to say, I don't want it. Likewise, this finally explains the case again. This was all to explain the case of one person in the Tosefta, where they assumed the case of one person was even if they bought on subsequent days. Why isn't it the same as the three people? Because in a case where they sell the, they bought the ED last, it's in there best interest not to have this takana. And we allow them to basically say, I don't want the takana. Okay, so that's a very complicated way to just get to that simple or kind of simple answer. Okay, now we're going to go into some other situations relating to this Tosefta. Pshita, now we're going to get a little more complicated. Ruth sold to Naomi three plots of land. Okay, uh, no, Ruth sold to Naomi to, right, no, I guess, yeah, to one person, all three plots of land. Okay, so Naomi buys three plots. Now she sells a plot to Yael, okay? Naomi sells it, not the Ruth, but Naomi. Naomi bought all three and now starts selling them to someone else. So she sells for the Benonit and the Zibuit. And she kept the Edith for herself. And so now everyone can collect from the Edith because what was the case? We already said she bought the Edith last. Now if she buys the Edith last and she no longer has Benonit and Zibuit, then she can't make that claim of well, I, it's not in my best interest to go by the last one I bought because she already sold the rest of them. So, Daha Achronahi, because that was the last one she bought. And she doesn't have the others anymore. She sold them. So, therefore, since it was the last one and the others aren't in her possession anymore, then she no longer has that claim. 
ובינונית וזיבורית לית נהוגה בית, אמרתי להם אמר להו, גבו מבינונית וזיבורית, תלא נכלה בתקנת הדרבנן, right? And because, that's what I just said, because the בינונית וזיבורית are no longer in her possession, that she could say, go collect from them, because I don't want this תקנה, well, she doesn't have them anymore, so she can't claim them. So if she were to sell everything but the ED, and then comes any, anyone who's owed money, basically she will get them. אבא, מחל עידית ושיער בינוני וזיבורי. Now here comes an interesting thing. She sells the best, okay? Now, if she kept the best in her possession, and comes someone for the, the Baal Chov, the Baal Chov won't be able to collect from the ED because she could say, right, I don't want that taken out of the rabbis of the last one. But if she sells the ED, does Yael have the rights to say, I don't want that? Right? Not really, because she doesn't have the Benoni and the Zibrit. All she bought was the Yidi. So, Machar Yidi v'shir Benoni v'zibrit. So, Nomi keeps the Benoni and the Zibrit and sells the Yidi. Ma. Now, remember, the Yidi originally was the one that was sold last. So, theoretically, Leah comes, she should go straight to the Yidi. And Yael doesn't have the rights to say, well, this was in my best interest because she only bought one plot from Naomi. She isn't Naomi who bought all three. That's only true of someone who buys all three. So Sav Rabbi Lameimer, so Rabbi thought to say exactly that. Atukula gavam yidit. Everyone could come and come from the, get from the yidit because that was the last one that was sold from Naomi, from Ruth originally, right? The last one that Ruth sold. So Amalei Rabbi, Rabbi says, what are you talking about? This is fascinating. Ma machar rishon l'shini, kol schut shetavo liyadehu. Vekevan di ilu ati gabelu, gavi lokeach rishon, matze av vilehu mi beinu ni vezibrit, vav agav tachizav di beinu ni vezibrit, akati yidit b'nei chorin havu, Okay, I'm, I should really stop here and try to explain the words already, but it's, let's, let's go back to the beginning. He says, when Naomi sold the ED to Yael, she sold it with all the rights that came with it. So if the ED had stayed in the hands of Ruth, of uh, Naomi, even though she bought it last from Ruth, Naomi would be able to say, hey, go collect from my Benuni and Ziburi, right? This, yeah, the, to kind of the rabbis, to make it from the last one, that was to tell people, this isn't helpful to me. Well, since she sold that plot to Yael, she, Yael can claim, I bought that plot with all the rights that it came with, which means if Leah comes to collect, we're going to send her to the worst property, right, of, yeah, of, of uh, Naomi or the middle property, depending on what it is. But don't come collect from my ED because I bought it with the rights that came along with it, even though I don't have the three plot to claim this isn't in my best interest, but I bought it with whatever rights it came with. So again, she sold it with all the rights it had. Now, here we're going to go through, and this is just a review of everything we've said. If it was all still in Naomi's hands, she could make them buy, collect it from the Benoni and the Zibri. Even though when Naomi bought the two lesser plots, still Ruth had the original Edith and her property, and generally, and therefore that was kind of last in line. And if that, if, if it was Monday before she had bought the, the best land, anyone would have collected from Ruth from the best land. Therefore, Naomi could say though, I don't want this takanav, you know, that whole thing. Once I bought this land, and therefore, Yael can say the same thing. That belonged to Naomi. Because she bought it with all the rights that it came with. Okay, so that's an interesting machlok at Abayi Rava, right? Once you only have the ED, maybe you can't make this claim anymore. Or do we say, no, no, if she bought it from Naomi, uh, she bought it with all the rights it came with. I'm a Rava. We're going to have two more cases, and then with that, finish the daf. Ruven shemachar kostotav l'shimon. Mahalach shimon umachar sadeh hat l'levi. Okay, so let's go back to the people we know. Ruth owed money to Leah. Ruth sold all her property to Naomi. Same case as just before. Halach Shimon umachar sadeh had levi. Shimon, so that's our Naomi. She sells to Yael. Uba balchov de Ruven. Now comes the balchov of Ruven. Ratzami zegove, ratzami zegove. Ruven can go either to Yael or to Naomi. Either one. Well, let's just see which case. Lo amaran ela dezaven benoni. That's only if she sold to Yael benoni land. But if she didn't sell to Yael benoni land, then no. Because if she sold not the right type of land to Yael, and Yael bought that, Yael can claim. These are all what claims people could claim. I specifically bought the Edith and the Zibri because I knew she had a loan out. And I knew she'd go collect from, you know, that she's not going to collect from me because I don't need, I didn't buy the Benoni land exactly to avoid that situation. And even if she bought Benoni, Nami lo amaran ele de lo shir Benoni te kavate. If Naomi had Benoni land 
and sold some of the Ben Onila, but not all of it, to, to Yael, then still Yael could claim, yeah, I bought Ben Onila, but you know what? I left some Ben Onila with Naomi. You go to her first. She was the first one who bought it. I don't collect from me. If she left by Shimon, lo then you can't collect from Yael. Right, if she left with Naomi. Because again, she could say, I left you now. Amar Abai. Ruvain. Now we have a totally different thing, and this is actually quite simple. It's a totally different concept. It's it's with similar situation. Ruvain shemachar sedel shimon ba'achrayu. Now normally you sell, if you sell this land, like uh, Ruth sells land to Naomi. We know there's a loan out. Ruth generally sells it with a short responsibility. That means that if Naomi's gets, the land gets seized from Naomi, well, Ruth will have to compensate her for the for the money that she lost. Okay, that's clear. Unless she sells it without a chayut. Otherwise, the default is it's with war- with a warranty, basically. So now we're a guarantee. So Ruvain sells to Shimon, meaning Ruth sells to Naomi with a guarantee. That's Leah. She comes vitar me Shimon and takes it directly from Naomi. That's what we've been talking about all. Dinahu da azel Ruvain and Dina Let's say Ruth didn't really owe the money. Let's say Ruth already paid back the money. And Leah goes straight to Naomi and takes the field. Now, what does Naomi know about whether Ruth paid back the money or not? She can't make a claim. So Ruth can come in and make a claim, okay? And say, listen, Leah, I paid back the money. What are you bothering Naomi for? And Naomi, and uh, Leah can't say to Ruth, hey, don't butt into my business. This is between me and Naomi. This has nothing to do with you anymore. You sold your land, your lean property. I'm dealing with it with with uh, Naomi directly. She can't say that. But why? To Amarle, because Ruth can say, this affects me. If you take it from Naomi, I'm going to have to pay her back. This assumes one thing, which is, if she didn't have anything to do with it, if she sold to the land without Ahrayut, then Ruth couldn't make a claim at all. So the Gemara says, some people say, what are you talking about? Even if Ruth has no interest here, Okay, no financial interest that she won't have to pay the money back because she sold it for a cheap price and Naomi bought it anyway. She loved for you. She took a risk, and the risk was all in, in Naomi's hands. Still, Ruth could go and make a claim because she could say, "Listen, if it's true that Naomi's not going to get any money out of me, but she'll be very angry with me, and just because of that, I'm allowed to make a claim." Okay, the first opinion says no, she can't, and some people actually go as far as to say this shows that you can't actually hire a lawyer who doesn't have to do with your case, who, which is a fascinating concept that you couldn't hire a lawyer. Because otherwise, Ruth could just come and make a claim as her lawyer. Okay, so most people say that's not true. But this, this is a different kind of, we're not talking about her doing it as her lawyer. Uh, and maybe they say, maybe this was because Naomi didn't agree to Ruth coming, like Naomi didn't hire her to come. Anyway, that's a whole aside. Anyway, what we had today in the second part of the DAF was all sorts of cases of property that was sold in different orders in different situations and who can get from what. And again, it was quite complicated. I'm sorry, it's a long DAF for a Friday. But uh, hopefully it's clear. It's the kind of daf that you kind of have to go over more than once to really fully get all the nuances. Uh, it's quite uh, 